Big cut. And a quick look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our fighters are ready. Our officials, they too are ready. Oregon, are you ready? Please welcome to the cage, Nick Chabatoni. Nick Chabatoni now making his way to the cage. Chabatoni hails from Grass Valley, California and stands at six feet, four inches tall. He's fighting out of the 185 pound weight class and his current amateur MMA record stands at two wins, zero losses. He currently holds a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and trains at a powerhouse MMA in Grass Valley, California. He considers himself a mixed martial artist who specializes in Muay Thai. Chabatoni has definitely shown his stand-up skills in the past year at King of the Cage. Always an impressive fighter, very explosive, very heavy hitting. Nick Chabatoni heads into the cage. Tsunami Jackson. Johnny Jackson now makes his way to the cage. Jackson hails from Klamath Falls, Oregon, and stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. Jackson's current amateur MMA record stands at three wins and two losses. He currently holds a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and trains out of weapons grade MMA. He considers himself a freestyle fighter, so that we can't really predict much from this fighter. We're just going to have to wait and see how it all rolls out. Johnny Jackson heads into the cage. Casino Resort, Lincoln City, Oregon. King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout at a catch weight of 190 pounds. Your referee in charge of the action, Kelly Owitlock. 
Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet four inches tall, official weight 189.9 pounds. He represents Powerhouse MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Grass Valley, California, presenting Nick Chabatoni. Here's a opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire in the red corner, stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall, official weight 188.7 pounds. He represents weapons grade MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Klamath Falls, Oregon, presenting Johnny the Tsunami Jackson. Once again, your referee is Kelly Whitlock, now with the final instructions, three rounds scheduled. All right, we went over the rules earlier. Protect yourselves at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch them now and let's do it. Round number one, let's get things started off. Nick Chabatoni versus Johnny Jackson. Chabatoni in the blue gloves, Jackson in the red. Jackson off with some nice little leg kicks right there. Ooh, Ooh a little slip there. He's going to have to be careful with that. Uh, Chavatoni obviously has a little bit of that height advantage and the reach advantage. But Jackson doesn't look intimidated at all. Now, I'll tell you, if he keeps using those legs like that, they even out the reach. Yeah, definitely. There he goes, just pushes straight through in the inside. Ooh, a nice exchange there. Oh, these, these guys are going for gold right here. Yeah, they are, definitely. Johnny Jackson coming in with the heat. I don't know if Chabatoni was expecting all that. He caught off right at the so. back. You know, usually as, as a bigger guy, you're thinking, okay, this guy's going to, you know, you want to stay away from me. Right. And, you know, watch what he does and this and that. But now he, Jackson's coming in full force right here. You know, Jackson trying to come in for the takedown, but I mean, if I were him, I'd stay with the stand-up. Seems yeah, to be working out for him. It was. Yeah, takedown's definitely going to be harder on that opponent. It's much taller than him. Chabatoni landed some hard hits right there. You can hear him just pounding away. Yeah, smack. Yeah, I think Jackson better uh, is better off just testing his luck on the stand-up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was doing good. Oh, look at that. Chabatoni forcefully turns naked. him around. <laughs> Jackson comes back out. There you go. Got to throw some strikes back. Oh, he's getting caught. These guys are going at it. Chabatoni making some nice jabs there. Jackson getting thrown off guard now a little bit. I think Jackson might have wasted a little too much energy trying to do that takedown. Jackson still trying to look. Oh, Ooh. heavy hit right there. There we go. Oh, oh and he a got it. <laughs> just a wow. Man, look at these guys. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> the bombs are just getting thrown back and forth. No remorse. It looks like they're calling a timeout here. Oh, oh, look at that. The cage. There we go. One point yeah, deduction. I mean, I mean Jackson's doing his job right there. He's got Chabatoni wondering what the hell's going on. Definitely. And they're getting right back into it. I mean, these guys are doing a good job right here going back and forth. Look at that Jackson with a nice trip. Gets full mount. Oh, slipping in that rear naked choke. He might get it. I think he, oh, he's got a few seconds. Oh, can he get can it? Can he beat the clock? Can he do it? It's close. Oh, and saved by the bell. Oh, man. Wow. Very, that was close. Now, that was an exciting first round. Let's look at that replay right there. Just an amazingly explosive performance from both these fighters. I mean, Jackson just seemed to totally take Chabatoni off guard, but Chabatoni said, all right, that's yeah. how it's going to be. Duked it right back. 
Yeah, he did. I mean, they were going back and forth. Good, good shots right here. Jackson with a nice trip. Almost got a rear naked choke on the end. Round number two, kicking it off. Nick Chavatoni versus Johnny Jackson in a very eventful first round we just came out of. Oh yeah, totally unexpected. I was, you know, these guys came out swinging away. Let's see how this second round takes off. Johnny Jackson still not seemingly having a problem with that distance. He looks no, like he can push. They're going Ooh, back at it again. Yeah, look at this. Some solid hits from both oh. of these fighters just taking them. Man, it's anyone's game right here. It really is. It's on it. It's whoever drops first. These guys are just, ooh, Chaba Tony looking like he's got a little bit more power now. Jackson looking a little rustled. Yeah, he's just waiting for the clear shot. Oh, uh -oh. no, that's not a good spot right here. Oh, not good at all. Chaba Tony going to let loose. Look at that. He's getting a little too wild, Chaba Tony. He might let Jackson slip out the back. It's very possible. Oh, with some head. Ooh, right to the ear. Yeah. Johnny Jackson gets it back up onto his feet. Oh. Oh, but the guillotine, that looks deep. Oh, that looks real deep. Oh, lets him back up. Oh, yeah. Bend, bend with I more gotta, fists. I got to say, good job by Chavatoni. You let it go that, you know, he didn't have it. Let it go and delivered a good shot. But man, these guys are going at it. Look at that, no quitting either one of them. Uh-uh. Jackson just continually pressing through. Chavatoni doing a great job of keeping the damage going. Yeah. Jackson got to be careful here in these positions. He's putting himself in, man. He's taking a lot of beating. And you can hear that smack. Yeah. Ref's watching really closely right here. This, this is not going to look good for Jackson. Jackson. Whereas Jackson quite isn't really grappling on anything right now. Has the ankle, but not, yeah. there's not really much he could do from that position. He's going to want to stand up and just, I think he's going to fare better if he just dupes it out at this point. Yeah, I mean, those are some good shots. I mean, they're getting some, a lot of momentum right there. He's going up and down, up and down. I mean, I don't know. Shabatoni doing a great job of just keeping it, making use out of every second. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's the call. Johnny, the ref says no more. Johnny Jackson just takes a little too much damage there. What an amazing fight, though. Oh, it was. I mean, there was no winner until the end. It really you wasn't. Know, you, no. It honestly was just a matter of who, who really got hit with that one last shot that yeah. they couldn't take. I mean, both these guys just iron jaw going right at it. Punch after punch after punch. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Kelly Whitlock has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, two minutes and 24 seconds of round number two. The winner by TKO, Nick Chavatoni. Here is Zach Koss. Zach Cox now making his way to the cage. Cox hails from Portland, Oregon and stands at six feet, one inches tall. He fights out of the 155 pound weight class and his current amateur MMA record stands at two wins, zero losses. He currently holds a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and trains out of Impact in Beaverton, Oregon. Now, Zach Cox is primarily a ground fighter. Uh, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is very strong. That's where he feels most comfortable, so we're gonna make any predictions. He's most likely gonna wanna get that takedown early, just trying to get that early advantage. Zach Cox now makes his way into the cage.
here is Exe, the executioner Benitez. Exe Benitez now makes his way to the cage. Benitez hails from Salem, Oregon and stands at five feet, eight inches tall. Fighting out of the lightweight class, his current amateur MMA record stands at four wins and one loss. He currently holds a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and trains out of Combat Sports Center. He is influenced by the likes of Cobra Kai and practices a strong stand-up game. You know, Benitez definitely has knockout capability, so it's going to be very tricky for his opponents. Really going to have to keep his guard up, keep dodging, because if he gets caught with one of those heavy shots, it could be the end of it. Referee doing the final inspections now. Exi Benitez now. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Chinook Greens Casino Resort, Lincoln City, Oregon, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the lightweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Kelly Whitlock. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 6'1", official weight, 156.9 pounds. He represents Impact MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Portland, Oregon, presenting Zach Cox. Here's important across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, eight inches tall. Official weight, 156.4 pounds. He represents the Combat Sports Center. Ladies and gentlemen, from Salem, Oregon, presenting Exe, the Executioner Benitez. Once again, your referee of this three round lightweight bout, Kelly Whitlock, now with the final instructions. All right, guys, we went over the rules earlier. Protect yourselves at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch them now and let's do it. Round number one, let's kick things off. Zach Cox versus Exi Benitez. Benitez in the red, Cox in the blue. Both fighters looking ready to go. Good footwork on them. You know, they're dancing around nicely, moving good. Now let's just engage a little more. Looks like he got a nice solid kick there. Yeah. There you go, there oh. you go. Ooh, nice takedown for Cox, but Benitez locks on to the to the head. Well, you know, he went for a guillotine, which is good, but then, you know, Cox switched the side, switched the side to, you know, <laughs> defend properly. Cox doing a great job staying yeah, on top of Benitez. Good job, and I mean, this is where Benitez would waste a lot of energy if he doesn't get out, but he got out. There we and go. He, the tables are turning now. Yeah, now you just got to keep maintain the position, right? relax a little bit, hold him. No, you, you don't have to worry. You're in a safe spot. There you Ooh. go. There you go. Some nice punches. Soften him up. That's one thing you got to know when you're on top like that or, you know, when you switch over. Hey, you don't need to be in a hurry. Just relax. So, so secure the position. So you don't lose it like this. Right. And just like now, Benitez right back on his back. Yeah, you see Cox right there. He just holds him and says, okay, you know what? Let me see what I got to do. Switch side control here. You know, plans and stuff out so he doesn't lose position. But, you know, Benitez, you got to be careful because he's quick. Yes, he is. Wiggles around a lot. You give him a little space. Boom. He's able to slip right out. Cox yeah. has some great uh, weight distribution he's working with here. Look at that. The roll 
rolled right out of it. Rolled right under. Good spot right there. But wait Ooh, a minute. Kimura. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, and he looks like it's not oh, quite. Oh, oh there, there it is. is. That's Dang. it. That's it. Oh, a hard Kimura. Crank that arm. Let's take a look. Let's look at that yeah. again. Cox just was able to was coming in, was doing a, some great you know display of control on the ground. Was able to keep his positioning where he wanted yeah. it to be. But Benita slipping out of everything he seemingly everything he threw yeah. at him. It'll look like just a matter of convenience. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes and one second of round number one. Your winner by tap out submission from a Kimura, Zach Cox. <laughs> Oregon, are you ready for some women's MMA? Please welcome to the cage, Angelica, the messenger, Nicholson. Now making her way to the cage, Angelica Nicholson. Nicholson hails from Colville, Washington and stands at five feet, two inches tall. A natural strawweight fighter, her pro MMA record stands at one win and two losses. Her amateur MMA record standing at three wins and one loss. Nicholson currently holds a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and trains out of Refining Fire in Colville, Washington. On top of her Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, she also studies Krav Maga so it'll be very interesting to see these uh, mix of techniques in the cage tonight. She's definitely a very well-rounded fighter and uh, formidable to any opponent that stands in her way. Angelica Nicholson now heads into the cage. Brittany Sims now making her way to the cage. Sims hails from Columbus, Ohio and stands at five feet, three inches tall. Currently fighting out of the 125 pound weight class, her amateur record stands at four wins and one loss. Sims trains out of fisticuffs in Vancouver, Washington. Her styles and influences include boxing and jiu-jitsu. Now Sims just has an amazing stand-up game. She's fierce, she's powerful, she's very quick. She always follows through with her combinations. Definitely going to be something to look out for. Her opponent's going to have to look out for. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Chinook Wind Casino Resort, Lincoln City, Oregon, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the women's junior flyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Dave Hagan. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet two inches tall, official weight 122.8 pounds. She represents Refining Fire MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Colville, Washington, presenting Angelica, the messenger, Nicholson. Her opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, three inches tall. Official weight, 125 pounds. She represents Fisticuffs MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Columbus, Ohio, presenting Brittany Eagleflex Sims. 
Once again, Dave Hagen is your referee. Now with the final instructions, three rounds schedule. All right, ladies, hard to discuss the rules. Want a good, clean fight? Protect cells at all times, obey the commands. Any questions? Touch them, go back, come out fighting. Round number one, let's get things started. Angelica Nicholson versus Brittany Sims. Sims in the blue gloves, Nicholson in the red. Just like the rest of these fights tonight, it looks like they're off with some high energy. Oh, look at that. Ooh, Sims. Right away. Look at that, not letting up at all. Just unloading. Wow, overwhelming force there. You can see the power she's putting behind those punches. He's got to make sure she don't blow herself out right here, you know, and get tired out. Definitely. Nicholson looked like she got thrown off guard a little bit there, but she's recovering, sticking back into the fight. Yeah, but for Sims, you know, if you keep that pace up, how how long can Nicholson keep it up? You right, know? It becomes a matter of endurance. How tough, you know, how much, how much, how many pits can she take? And oftentimes, you know, we'll see female fight female fighters. I've seen, uh, from what I've collected, are much more durable. And in, in some instances, you know, they'll keep going, 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 taking hits all day long. Yeah. Man. Sims, Sims just unloading the flurry of hits. I mean, Nicholson had a good head kick, push him into the cage. I thought, okay, you know what, tides are ta changing, ta turning, whatever, but nah, Sims not having it at all. Sims definitely gaining a lot of points for control this round. Control and damage. Just dominating right now. Look at this, dropping bombs. She's not reserving any power in these punches. Oh, no. She's trying to end it quick. Yeah, she is. Which is great. I mean, that's what we love to see. Of course. You know, come in here, give it 100%. Hey, finish one, two rounds. Yeah, win-win situation for yeah. the fighter, for the fans. For everyone. Except for the opponent. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, Nichols is doing a good job here of, you know, tying Sims up so she's not getting no damage. Oh, but as soon as you say that, Sims gets released again. Ooh, there's some it. nice heavy hits. Nicholson really going to have to turn things around here. So far, tying Sims up is what's working for Nicholson right there, but, man, when she lands on her back like this in this position, that's not in her favor. Right. Sim still keep him busy. Yeah, yeah. Nichols has got to be the one land on top. You know, but man. Sims just waiting for that opportunity once more for Nicholson to open up. There it is. Look at that. Ooh, well, she just makes a hammer open up. fist. <laughs> Uh, Sims tells her, let's get up, let's keep going. Hot damn man. Nicholson, gotta give her some props. She's staying very tough, very much still in the oh, fight. Yeah, she's, she's not giving up. And uh, I see Sims with her mouth open a little bit, breathing a little heavier. This could be what Nicholson needed. Yeah, definitely. Sims looking yeah. like she's taking a little bit of time to recover now. Nicholson could be exploiting that, but on the other end, I mean, Nicholson probably taking some time to recover as well. <laughs> True. Yeah. Let's see if Sims has another flurry like that before the minute's up. Definitely noticing that uh, slowdown now. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Sims was burning through a lot of energy at the beginning of this round. I mean, solid I the whole time until now. I wonder if that, if that, if that carries on to round number two. This could be Nicholson's break right here, you know? 
Yeah, Sims could have, for all we know, Sims could have been hoping for that knockout there. Yeah. Going to have to change her plans up a little bit. Oh, Ooh, oh nice knee. two. Ooh. Oh, that oh, might be man, it. Oh, that's that. it. The, the connection on that knee to face. We'll just we'll take a look at it right here, a close up. Sims just yeah, that's just knocked her with that first hit, really knocked her off guard. Those oh, two stop knees. Stop it! Yeah, that. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dave Hagen has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time: four minutes and forty-three seconds of round number one. Your winner by TKO, Brittany Eagle Flex. Sam. Here is Eric McConico Jr. Now making his way to the cage, Eric McConico Jr. McConico hails from Cave Junction, Oregon, and stands at six feet tall. Fighting out of the 170 pound weight class, his current pro MMA record stands at one win and zero losses. Although new to the uh, professional game, his amateur MMA record stood at five wins and two losses previously. His current Brazilian Jiu Jitsu ranking stands with a blue belt and he trains out of Gracie Barra in Portland, Oregon. Conoco is influenced by the likes of Fabiano Scherner and Andy Minker. Now, McConico's very quick on his feet. He's very agile. He's able to punch at angles that you, his opponent isn't going to be looking for. Uh, he's very he got, he's got that surprise tactic on his side. Very tough guy to beat in stand up. Also, a very tough guy to beat in, on the ground as well. He's uh, got a blue belt in jujitsu, so he's more than proved himself there. Eric McConico Jr. heads into the cage. Jeremy the Condor Burford. Jeremy Burford now making his way to the cage. Burford hails from Clackamas, Oregon, and stands at six feet tall. Currently fighting out of the 170 pound weight class, his pro MMA record is fresh, starting at zero wins, zero losses. So tonight is his debut professional fight. We'll see how he stands. His amateur MMA record stood at five wins and four losses. So he has some decent experience, a decent record. Definitely looking to make his mark on the professional realm. Burford trains out of Portland Thai boxing. and specializes in Muay Thai and also some catch wrestling. Very well-rounded fighter. Uh, definitely going to be a good opponent for Eric McConico. Jeremy Burford heads into the cage. Casino Resort, Lincoln City, Oregon. King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round belt in the welterweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Dave Hagan. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet tall, official weight 170.7 pounds. He represents Gracie Baja Portland. Ladies and gentlemen, from Cove Junction, Oregon, presenting Eric McConaughey Jr. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at six feet tall as well. Official weight, 168.4 pounds. He represents Portland Thai Boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, from Clackamas, Oregon, presenting Jeremy the Condor Burford. Once again, your referee of this three-round welterweight attraction, Dave Hagen, now with the final instructions. 
All right, gentlemen, I already went over the rules. Want a good, clean fight? Protect yourselves at all times. Obey the commands. Any questions? Touch them, go back, come out fighting. Here we are, round number one. Eric McConico versus Jeremy Burford. McConico in the blue, Burford in the red. Conoco coming in hot. Both of these guys doing a good job right now. Definitely, you know, back and forth, a good job. Fill each other out with, with punches and kicks. That, that's a good fill out process right here. Got some action. Not just you know, dancing around, you know, throwing a few pot shots here and there, but now nah, we're gonna get good contact here. Ooh, Ooh, look at that, good contact with these guys. Watch the head bounce on that one. Oh, but Burford trying to lock in a guillotine here. Yeah, Ooh, oh, he might, oh, that might be it right there. It's possible. We've McConaughey seen this plenty of times gotta get his head up. Yeah, he's got to get his head up good. Good push, arch that back. Burford trying to take it here. Oh, oh it there goes he goes. Off. Now McConaughey going to try to look to punish Burford for that. Let him back up, man. Let him back up. That's the key right now. Let him up and put him back on his back with a punch. Yeah, I don't know if McConaughey wants to take things to the ground. Burford waiting for it. Ooh, and trying to get a nice little spin on there, but doesn't quite get the positioning he was looking for. You know, that might have been the right position for McConaughey. McConaughey. Because Burford didn't look like he knew what he was, well, not that he didn't know what he was doing. It didn't look like he didn't have that much ground skills. Right. Both these fighters doing a good job of staying busy with each other. Not keeping things stagnant. No, you constantly see them both rotating, you know, so it ain't like, Hey, you know, I got you, I got you. No, no, these guys are both going at it, both having good control over each other. Not a nice kick. Burford better watch out for those kicks, man. Definitely. He got I hit mean, good earlier with one. Yeah, he got caught up with that. You know, there's only so many of those you can take. <laughs> Conoco putting a little more pressure on Burford. Just as I say that, yeah, Burford yeah, yeah, in. You know what you say? Conoco just got some of those really strong kicks. Burford returning with some of his own. I tell you, these guys are doing a great job. You know, both of them going at it right here. It's going back and forth. Now a one-sided fight. It's just it's good action all the way through. I, I can't say I'm going for one or the other because, like I said, they're both doing a great job. Oh, McConaughey. Possibly sink it in, this rear naked uh, choke. It's a dangerous situation for Burford. And that throws me off why Burford would turn his back to McConaughey like that. I mean, put himself in this bad position right here. Now McConaughey gonna make use out of taking this back. Oh, look at that. Oh, heavy slam. Oh, my oh, God. Man. The slam, I think, knocked him out. I think it did. That was heavy. Let's take another look at that. That was just the power of that slam. I almost snapped his head back. Now, McConaughey is just full circle. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, four minutes and 16 seconds of round number one. Your winner by knockout, Eric Mechanical Jr. Here's Anthony, the psychic assassin, Zender. Now making his way to the cage, Anthony Zender. Zender hails from Lacey, Washington and stands at five feet, five inches tall. Fighting out of the 135 pound weight class, his pro MMA record stands at eight wins and 11 losses. Anthony Zender, he's been in the game for a little while. He's got plenty of experience under his belt, so he's seen, you know, a lot of different kinds of fighters. He's going to be a little more prepared for uh, for whoever he's going to fight in the cage. And Zender trains out of Academy of Brian Johnson in Lacey, Washington, and studies kickboxing, Muay Thai, and wrestling. Anthony Zender now makes his way into the cage. Here is Johnny Kid Cavembo Munoz Jr. Kid Cavembo Johnny Munoz Jr. now makes his way to the cage. Standing at five feet, nine inches tall and fighting out of the 135 pound weight class. Munoz's pro MMA record stands at six wins and zero losses. His amateur record held nonetheless three wins and zero losses. He currently stands to be defeated by no one. His speed, his agility, his power and his technique has just been able to overwhelm all of his opponents thus far. He's uh, one of King of the Cage's best up and coming fighters. Is sure to be a hell of a show. Munoz trains out of sequence jiu-jitsu and MMA, where he practices his signature Brazilian jiu-jitsu technique. Now, Johnny Munoz is probably one of the hardest working fighters here in the game right now. He's hungry, he's coming into the game, beating everybody down, not getting any losses, looking to pick up his seventh win tonight. We'll see how he stands against Anthony Zender. Johnny Munoz Jr. heads into the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Chinook Wings Casino Resort in Lincoln City, Oregon, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the flyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Dave Hagen. Introducing first, the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet five inches tall. Official weight, 134.7 pounds. He represents the Academy of Brian Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, from Lacey, Washington, presenting Anthony, the Psychic Assassin, Zender. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet, nine inches tall. Official weight, 135.6 pounds. He represents sequence jiu-jitsu and MMA. Ladies and gentlemen from Norco, California, presenting Johnny Kid Cavembo Munoz Jr. Once again, your referee in charge of this three round flyway foul, Dave Hagen, now with the final instructions. All right, gentlemen, I already discussed the rules. Want a good, clean fight? Protect yourselves at all times. Obey the commands. Any questions? Touch them up, go back, come out fighting.
Round number one. Let's get things started. Anthony Zender versus Johnny Munoz Jr. Johnny Munoz in the red, Anthony Zender in the blue. Johnny Munoz, uh, a great up and coming fighter we've seen here on the West Coast, has shown a lot of promise lately in his, in his, all of, in his past fights. Very strong stand up fighter. We'll see how he stands against Anthony Zender. Oh, and it doesn't look like <laughs> it doesn't look like it took very long at all. Yeah, that was not long at all. Wow, I think Anthony Zender doesn't even, isn't even sure what happened. It was one shot, one. I mean, I that, think was that was literally only one punch. I think it was the, the whole fight, right? <laughs> there it was. I oh, think no, all, okay, there okay. Was, he threw one, but I think from Munoz that yeah. was the first punch from Munoz. Like he threw some. That was it. Yeah, those those jabs weren't jabs. Those they are just were measuring just distance, Yeah, he right? was measuring. He's a pow. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 38 seconds, round one. Your winner by knockout, Johnny Kid Kvenbo Munoz Jr. Here is Salaman Cutthroat Amadia. Now making his way to the cage, Salomon Amadiar. Solomon hails from Sacramento, California and stands at five feet, nine inches tall. Fighting out of the 180 pound weight class, his pro MMA record stands at five wins and zero losses. His amateur MMA record beforehand stood at an impressive five wins and one loss. He currently has a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and trains out of Team Alpha Male in Sacramento, California. He's been training mixed martial arts since the age of 12 and uh, considers his style a, uh, a mix of a wrestling uh, freestyle technique. Saliman is a heavy hitter with a great ground game, so he's definitely going to be a formidable force to look out for. Salomon Amadiar makes his way into the cage. Here is Tyson, the anti-hero Jeffrey. Now making his way to the cage, Tyson Jeffries. Jeffries hails from Troutdale, Oregon and stands at six feet, one inch tall. Fighting out of the 170 pound weight class, his pro MMA record currently stands at 14 wins and nine losses. His current Brazilian Jiu Jitsu ranking stands at a blue belt and he trains out of Gracie Barra in Portland, Oregon. Jeffrey specializes in boxing and jiu-jitsu while also training in wrestling and kickboxing. He's a very well-versed fighter. He's proved himself plenty of times here in the King of the Cage ring. 14 wins and nine losses. He has plenty of experience up his belt. He's a hard worker, he's a very tough fighter to beat. This is sure to be a very exciting matchup. Once again, this match is brought to you by Lucas Oil and General Tire. Tyson Jeffries makes his way into the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Chinook Prince Casino Resort, Lincoln City, Oregon, King of the Cage and General Tire present our co featured belt of the evening. Sanctioned by the Oregon State Athletic Commission and Celeste Tribal Athletic Commission. It's in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder, Terry Trevilcock Jr., Matchmaker Al Johnson, and Promoter Jeff Mahalik. The three judges scoring this bout will be Rick Campos, Kim Kaminsky, and Steve Newport.
After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kelly Huitla. And now, Oregon, put your hands together for our co-feature of the evening, three rounds of MMA and the middleweight division. <laughs> Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing five feet nine inches tall, official weight 179.2 pounds. This team alpha male fighter has a professional record, five victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sacktown, Sacramento, California, presenting Salomon Cutthroat Amandia. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire in a red corner stands at 6 1. Official weight, 179.7 pounds. He represents Gracie Baja Portland, and his professional record reads as follows. 14 victories, nine defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Troutdale, Oregon, presenting Tyson, the anti-hero, Jeffrey. Once again, Kelly Whitlock is your official for our co-feature, three rounds, middleweights. All right, this is the co-main event. We went over the rules earlier. Protect yourselves at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch them now and let's do it. Here we go, round number one, Solomon Amadiar versus Tyson Jeffries. Jeffries in the red. Solomon in the blue. You guys coming out with some good heat on their punches right here. Hey, as to expect from this whole the whole night of fights that yeah. we've had upcoming to this have just been, you know, overwhelmingly impressive. People are putting it all out on the line tonight. Yeah, they're mixing it up. I mean, they just stay jabs across their uppercuts, hooks, everything right here. Some nice combos in. Jeffries making some good use of those strikes and kicks. Oh, this is a nice quick pace for these big guys right here. Jeffries maintaining a good control in center cage. Solomon comes back with some hits. Oh, I think we can expect oh. a huge explosion coming up here real soon. Yeah. But from who, I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing, is they're both just stealing yeah, back yeah. heat. It's just a matter of when they close in. Yep. I mean, both guys, look at this, man. Back and forth, swing, I mean, whew. Jeffries looking very calm and patient. Solomon just waiting for Jeffries to walk in. To Solomon. Jeffries returns with some jabs. Solomon's got to be a little careful because when he's, he's chasing Jeffries down, I mean, he's not punching. Jeffries just pop, popping off, popping off. Jeffries really just working to build that momentum whenever he starts setting up his combo. Solomon just acting like a wall, blocking the Jeffrey shots. Ooh, oh. some nice, nice contact.
Jeffries waiting for that opportunity. These guys throwing a lot of hands. I want to see if maybe those knees jump up on some more of those leg kicks they threw earlier on the round. Right, yes, those were coming out very strong. I mean, with the power these guys are throwing behind, it really only takes one hit to get caught up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I mean, you can see the power. He ran right into the <laughs> corner. Oh, Sullivan. That. There it is. There it Heavy is. Heavy hits. There it is. That might be it. Oh, that's it. And the referee will call it. That's it. Sullivan waiting for that just that moment to gun. Let's check that out again. That first hit really oh, rocked him right there, and it was over from oh, that point. Oh, yeah. First hit, second, third hit, seal the deal. That's all he needed. <laughs> Sullivan just waiting and waiting and waiting and lying in wait for that perfect shot. Was able to come right out. We'll toss it to Dean Stone for the final announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Kelly Whitlock has seen enough, steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, four minutes and 14 seconds of round number one. Your winner by TKO, Salomon Cutthroat Amandia. Uh, after this fight, I'm just trying to get ready for the next fight, and we are moving to Bend, Oregon. Uh, we're opening a gym in Bend, Oregon, and our main focus is on doing that. I am fighting Angela Danzig, and what I know about her is that she's a well-rounded fighter and that she's going to come at me with guns blazing, and I'm totally prepared for that. Uh, my predictions for the night's fight is uh, I'll fight smart and I'll find the holes in her game to win. I, well, I feel like Angela is a very well-rounded fighter and she's one of those fighters that you're not really sure um, what she's going to come in and what she's planning on using because she's got a lot of tools in her toolbox. So when I was preparing for this fight, I wanted to make sure that I was ready, not just ready, but better in all aspects. So I trained all around for everything when I was getting ready for this fight. I just want to win this fight. Uh, I think uh, Glenna had her time. It's time for her to retire. So. I uh, wish her a happy future, whatever she's doing. Uh, but uh, I'm going to keep on fighting, so no matter how this fight ends up. I don't think it's quite hit me yet that, um, that this is the last time that I'm going to perform in the cage. I think that moment's going to come at the end of the fight when, when the ref is saying how it was stopped or, you know, the end of the fight. I think that's when it's going to all kind of hit me. Glenna, enjoy your retirement, but you're going to remember this last fight. Angela, I sure hope you're planning on bringing your A game because I don't even have a B game. Here is Angela Mama Danzi. Angela Danzig now making her way to the cage. Danzig hails from Darmstadt, Germany stands at five feet, four inches tall. Fighting out of the 115 pound weight class, her current pro MMA record stands at two wins and three losses. She had a strong amateur record as well, standing at five wins and three losses. She currently holds a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and trains out of Danzig MMA in Los Angeles, California. Danzig trains in a boxing style. She was trained by Mac Danzig, of course. Her stand-up game is deadly, it's very strong. She's very quick on her feet, very heavy hitting. Her opponent, Glenna Avila, is really gonna have to watch out for that as Angela Danzig heads into the cage. Heartless, Glenna Avila. Glenna Heartless Avila, hailing from Portland, Oregon and standing at five feet, four and a half inches tall. 
fighting out of the 120 pound weight class. Her pro MMA record currently stands at six wins and four losses. Her amateur MMA record stood at six wins and zero losses. She trains out of fisticuffs and purebred in Vancouver, Washington. She's a very well-rounded fighter who trains specifically in boxing under Leonard Gabriel. She has very good ground fighting and wrestling skills. She can hold her own whether she's standing up, whether it's on the ground, it doesn't matter. Lena Avila has managed to tear through all of her opponents. Avila, a house favorite here at King of the Cage. One of our strongest female fighters. Tonight, fighting for the King of the Cage Women's Super Fight World Championship. Glenna Avila heads into the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Chinook Winds Casino Resort in Lincoln City, Oregon, King of the Cage and General Tire present our featured bout of the evening. Sanctioned by the Oregon State Athletic Commission and Celeste Tribal Athletic Commission. It's in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder, Terry Trebilcock Jr., Matchmaker Al Jocelyn, Promoter Jeff Mahalik, Timekeeper at the Bell, Brandy McCarty. The three judges scoring this bout will be Rick Campos, Kim Kaminsky, and Steve Newport. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from Nedro, New York, Dave Higgins. And now for all the fight fans in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Oregon, let's hear it. This is our main event of the evening. Five rounds of MMA for the King of the Cage Women's Super Fight Championship. Introducing first, the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet four inches tall, official weight 118.5 pounds. This Danzig MMA fighter has a professional record of two victories with three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Darmstadt, Germany, presenting Angela Mama Danzig. Her opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet, five inches tall. Official weight, 119.3 pounds. This fisticuffs and purebred fighter has a professional record of six victories with four defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from Rip City, Portland, Oregon, presenting Heartless Glenna. Avila! Once again, Dave Higgin is your referee for our main event. Five rounds scheduled. All right, ladies. This is the main event of the evening. I already discussed the rules. Want a good, clean fight? Protect yourselves at all times. Obey the commands. Any questions? Touch them, go back, come out fighting. Round number one, this is our main event. Angela Danzig versus Glenna Avila for the King of the Cage Women's Super Fight World Championship. Danzig taking her time, looking patient, waiting for that opportunity to strike. Avila making a good use of uh, that movement. She's circling Danzig. Yeah, but she, Avila needs to start engaging a little more. You know, she, she, I mean, she, she might be just. Seeing everything, you know, Danzig has to offer, but right. deliver a few as, as you as you wait in and checking everything out. Throw a few, see how she moves too. Nice 
nice little exchange there. Another work from the cage. Avila trying to use the cage to her advantage here. Danzig trying to get her back out of this. Avila gets the takedown she's looking for. Danzig trying to break out of this. Avila making good use of those elbows, dropping it down. Yeah, as, as women though, you always got to be careful because the way they're all flexible, man, you, it, I mean, it's, uh, to me it seems unfair for the woman, whoever's on top or on bottom, trying to, you know, to, you know maintain the position because they're so flexible, they, they can move around and do all this stuff to get out. And it, it ain't the same as guys, you know. You, you get on top like that, hey, you just, you know, you're secure right there. You don't worry about it, but, man, girls are something else, I tell you. Avila maintaining a pretty good position here. Making it hard for Danzig to keep up. Yeah, she got a forearm across her face, constantly trying to do something like that, you know, just drop bombs, which is great. Oh, look at that, man. She's scoring some good points right here. Nice elbow droppage. Yeah, Danzig's really going to have to look to get out of this here. It doesn't look like she's in the ideal position. But Glenna Avila isn't going to let her out that easy. There you go. She got it. Look at all that wiggle power. Great positioning on uh, Avila's part. She's able to get to whatever part of her opponent she needs. Yeah, she's doing a great job of total control right here on top. From the way she was almost you know, parallel to her to now side control. I mean, she's making, you know, dancing work for everything she's trying to do. Avila really just getting a bunch of points for control this round, damage this round. You know, she's really been dominating this fight thus far. Oh, yeah. Brings Danzig right back to the ground. Just when Danzig was getting away, you know, it's like, okay, I got up, I'm almost out. Puts her right back down. And what I like here is, is uh, Avila just dropping punishment on, on Danzig the whole time, you know. She's not just like holding her here, trying to control her. She's boom, punishing her at the same time. Trying to sink in a rear naked choke here. Doesn't quite have the neck. Yeah, she's got it across her face, I believe. Still a, a, Definitely not, uncomfortable. Not a, yeah, not, yeah, not comfortable to be in this vision at all. There we go. That will conclude round number one. We'll catch the next coming up. Take a look at that last recap. A lot of action in this round, though, man. They're going, they're going at it. And when Avila got her, got dancing to the ground, it was all Avila the whole time. I mean, you know, Danzig tried to get up on one, but then Avila just put it right back down and said, no, you ain't going nowhere. This is where you belong. Yeah, Avila definitely maintaining that dominant position. We'll see how uh, she keeps it going, if that uh, fatigue has worn her out at all or if she's still going strong. Round number two, let's get it started. Once again, Avila in the red gloves, Danzig in the blue. Danzig coming out with a little more heat, but Avila's matching it. Uh, both, both girls coming out a little quicker than the first round. 
They're ready. They're all warmed that up. Testing and phase yeah. is, is over, and now it's time to go. Avila takes things back to the ground. Avila making her way into a good position here on the side mount. Dropping some elbows on Danzig. This is not a good position for Danzig anymore, man. After that first round, she's got to do everything she can to get off that bottom. Avila, Avila showed a lot of skills here in the first round from this position, you know, able to, you know, change positions at will, you know, get good punishment going down, elbows, punches, everything. Avila just trying to make anything out of this position here. Danzig trying to hold on and maintain a defensive approach, but Avila just keeps the heat. Yeah, she's not making it easy for Danzig at all. You know, anything Danzig tries, she applies pressure. If not, she throws some punches, some elbows. Anything to distract Danzig from trying to get up and out. Danzig gets a couple of good licks in there, but Avila is just able to turn it right back in her favor. Danzig trying to get those legs high. Danzig trying to you know, control the arms of, of Avila right there so she don't take that punishment, but man, Avila just so powerful, overpowers her, pulls her arms out and just, boom, drops those bombs. She really is. I mean, she's able to just dominate uh, where Danzig goes, what Danzig does for the majority, basically the majority of the fight. Same thing she did in the first round there. We saw her just maintaining that control. Danzig trying to figure out, like, hey, man, what do I got to do to get out of here? And now she's got the cage there. Maybe she could use that cage to help her get up. Whereas before they were in the open, the open mat, that where she had nothing. Now she can probably post on that cage, you know, get it, get, get, let, use that cage, use something, you know. Right. There you go, got her feet on there. But as soon as she tries it, Avila sees it, notices it, turns her right around, gets her away from that. Danzig really just trying to find little leeway to get out of this. And Avila just staying persistent. Look at that posture, look at those elbows she's dropping. Man, hammer, fist, everything. Dan's got to be careful with those, man. She gives her that little bit of space right there to posture up. And then Avila takes full advantage. Coming down to the end of the round. Avila still going. And that ends. Avila, once again, a second round. Ended strong. I, think, I believe in her favor if I say anything. I mean, for just control alone, she's been able to just dominate the fight and take it wherever she wants it. Yeah, you, you, gotta, you gotta go past that, because just control alone, man, she was doing a lot with 
you know, just the punch and the action. I mean, she was keeping it going. I mean, there was non-stop action the whole time. You know, there was only a few, few little spurts where, where you know, Danzig had an opportunity to get away, but then Avila came right back and just shut her down and two. Round number three coming up. Round number three. Let's finish things off. Angela Danzig versus Glenna Avila. Thus far, I think Avila has just proved the control, the dominance, the power aspect of this fight. She's taking it wherever she needs to go, controlling the pace. Danzig, despite all that, Danzig's still looking fresh. And very much still looking like she's in this fight. But Avila just looking ready to go. Yeah, you know, both girls doing a good job. You know, Avila clearly having the advantage. If Danzig can keep it on the feet, Maybe she has an opportunity to finish, you know, Avila off. But if it goes back to the ground, Avila's got too much skill and power on that ground for Danzy to, you know, do anything. I mean, Danzy's got to take advantage of this opportunity right now that Avila's given her. And, and you know, land those shots. Avila goes oh. up for the takedown. Close, close. She almost had it. Almost had Danzy. Almost had a reversal, but man. Nabila is able to turn it around, keep it in her favor. Yeah, this is where Danzy does not want to be. That side mount is just uh, yeah, perfect not. place to just get dropped with elbows. Yeah, elbows, knees, everything. Hammer fist. Fighting from the bottom, that's great. That's what I'm talking about. You know, hey, just because you're on the bottom don't mean you can't throw punches. Avila just still maintaining that control. Dropping down some nice shots on uh, Danzig's head. Yes, yeah, she is. Keeping it Look busy. At that. Look, Look at, at that. that. Danzig still very, yeah, still in this fight, trying to get out of this, but. She, you know, she created a space. That was a space she needed to stand up. Right, she had a very small window she opportunity, but that she, was it. She know. didn't take advantage. Uh, Vila. Look at that. Wait, is this possible crucifix here? Yeah, it looks like it right there. Look at that. Yep. Look at that. Dropping the shots right there. Look at Danzy from there, throwing, trying to throw knees to the head of Avila. Trying to bounce it off, yeah, bouncing it off the cage, <laughs> use that momentum, whatever she could do. I mean, that's just a frustrating position to be in, tied up in a It is, it is, man. I think Danzig's a little worn out from having a Vila on her for the last two and a half rounds. Yeah, definitely. I think so. She's had to deal with basically double weight right there the whole yeah. time. It's got to be exhausting. And on top of that, you know, getting punched, elbowed. Oh, Avila sinking that something it? in that here. It? Oh, yeah, look at she that. Got it. And it calls rear naked choke. Glenna Avila takes the win. It was only a matter of time, I believe, at that point. I mean, Avila just had the dominant control that whole fight, took it exactly where she wanted it to go, waited yeah. for that perfect opportunity. I don't even think Danzy saw that choke coming because I didn't see it coming. I didn't either. It, was just, it just kind of happened. It was just ground and pound the whole time. All of a sudden, I think she just said, hey, she's not expecting it. I think she saw it open and just yeah. took advantage of it. Yeah, perfect execution from Glenna Avila. It was really able to just dominate that fight, take control. And it all worked out for her. Danzig, I think, was just fat too fatigued, really, to do too much back. And Avila was just pumped. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I think she didn't expect this choke to come in. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 3 minutes and 33 seconds of round number three. 
Your winner by top out via rear naked choke, women's super fight champion, Heartless Glenna Avila.